Oof. You guessed it. We're back on the VN. Uh, welcome back to the Clean Greg Motorsport YouTube channel. This week, I'm diving back into the four link on the, uh, on the VN. So finishing off tubbing it. All right, so not finishing off tubbing it. So this week, I'm going to finish off getting the diff mounted. Uh, so uh, I'm going to say by the end of this video, everything, uh, like all the diff, lower arms, everything, panard rod, coilovers, everything's done. Hopefully. I think, I think I'll get through it all this week. Um, and then that will set us up for the next video, which will be the, uh, yeah, finishing off all the tubs and getting a back seat in it. Uh, I'm just going to chuck a link up above here somewhere to part one of this, uh, this video series, uh, which is uh, getting the four link um, in the car and everything, which was last week's video. Um, and yeah, on the way to having a fully tubbed VN, or I should say mini tubbed VN. So I have been busy. Uh, I didn't film any of this because, yeah, making brackets is uh, the same old thing. Um, but these bad boys here, uh, which were once some 75 mil RHS, uh, this right here is the coilover mount. So coilover like so, and that will mount off the diff. So what my plan is here is basically I want to get these uh, to set the coilovers in the lowest position. Uh, so these go on the diff like so. Um, just use a three inch hole saw to knock those uh, holes there out. So this was what I started with um, and I went and worked out that this is roughly where I want these to sit, something like this. Uh, you can see that I am going to have to relocate some mounts or modify some mounts on the sway bar there because that's gonna cover it, but that's not a problem because I've uh, also made some brackets for that. So once I've got my template, go over to this RHS and mark it out like so. These two brackets were cut out of the same piece of RHS, so they were as you can imagine, that was a bit of RHS like that, and I just lopped them out. Um, this, uh, the actual mounts for the coilover, uh, the bolt to the, the bits that I'm going to weld to the diff, they are also out of that bit of RHS. I just, for some offcuts and welded a couple bits together and bingo bango. Uh, yeah, so they'll, they'll fit up something like that um, around that area. Uh, so, that means I need to get a top mount sorted. Uh, this side is gonna be a little bit different. I'm just gonna have to modify this uh, little diff breather here because that's gonna foul on it slightly, but other than that, it looks pretty good. What else have I done? Many, many things. Uh, so the fuel tank is gonna go back in today because I need to get the pan hard rod mounted. So from here down to here somewhere, the pan hard rod will sit. This bracket here, which is the standard mount, I'm going to lop that out in a sec. Uh, and I have started making uh, just another bit of scrap steel I had lying around. Uh, making some mounts for the panard rod, uh, for the body mount. will sit something like that. Um, um, I haven't done both sides. Uh, you can see here that it will kind of work on both sides, that mount, but... What I'm gonna do is mount this one up, um, tack it into position with a hole drilled into it so I can work out this side. And then from that, I'll work out the, the opposite one. Uh, that same piece of RHS come in handy because um, I had some more offcuts of it. So I just lop the end off of that and that is going to go somewhere like something like that. And that's going to be the bottom pan hard rod mount. So to the diff, I've machined up this little sucker uh, and that's going to, yeah, that's going to be the bottom pan hard rod mount. This is going to, so this is kind of catch 22 because I need to, I need to get the pan hard rod mounted so that I can mount the coilovers square um, so that they're like in the same position, the top mounts are in the same position. But I also need to get the coilovers mounted so that I can mount the pan hard rod. <laughs> uh, 
uh, because the, the pan hard rod mount obviously has to sit out a fair way, uh, clear everything, but mainly clear the coilovers where the coilovers will sit because they'll sit here. So yeah, bit of everything going on this week. All I'm going to do with the sway bar is just move it forwards and down slightly probably. Um, whew, yeah, I've just got to do those few things this week. So still, uh, yeah, a lot to do, so. All right, I've got a bit of fiddling around to do. Lopping off some mounts, uh, cleaning up some body bits where the uh, top bracket's gonna go for the coilovers, top mounts. Um, so I'm just gonna set up a time lapse and knock a bit of that out. And then I'll, uh, yeah, then I'll pick back up where I'm starting to mount this uh, pen hard rod. Again, very dirty job, but I got that pan hard rod uh, bracket removed. Um, it still had plenty of weld on there, so I had to get creative with it. But this is the new mount um, in with this uh, adjustable bar roughly in the right spot. Um, like I said, I'm gonna shorten this up and do some custom work on it. Um, so I've also cleaned up a heap of uh, area up there, which is where the, I'm just literally getting a piece of maybe 35 or um, 40 mil RHS, and I'm going to uh, weld it in there with a couple tabs on it for the um, coilovers. That's pretty simple, so. This is the other side of where the panard rod bracket is going to go, so my new one. Uh, this is the plate. Uh, can you see? This is the plate that I'm going to use for it. What I've done is I've cut a piece of cardboard to the size of the plate that I'm using, uh, and I'm just going to trim this cardboard slowly uh, one piece at a time. Let me just get that in a better spot. One piece at a time, um, so that it lines up with the uh, with the side that's already there. So basically, just trim a little bit out, bit by bit, until we're in the right spot. Somewhat in the area. Uh, and the reason I want to use cardboard here is so that I can line it up reasonably close. Um, to the to the back one, um, so the height is the same roughly on the bottom here, and I can easily uh, line up the bolt hole simply by just pressing on that that bit of cardboard there, and it goes through like that. So that's pretty much the shape of the bracket that I want to uh, want to achieve. Um, like I said, that's the bolt hole. Yeah, the camera didn't quite line up with it. That's the bolt hole, so I know where uh, to start with for that. So I can, I know I just need to trim a little bit off of here because you can see this bracket here, it's not quite lined up. So this cardboard just has to spin a little bit. But yeah, so I'll trim a little bit off of there. But looks pretty good, I reckon. I'll just like clean this up through this way like I did the back one, line it up. Pretty, uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. That's pretty much what I've done with all of these brackets. Make everything out of cardboard first, so you're not having any any uh, material wastage, basically. Something like that. So I've just got that mounted like that, roughly, so I know where to trim this back bracket. 
Um, then I'm just going to put a bit of flat bar on this side, plate this end. I'm gonna weld up all these holes, don't worry about that at the moment, but um, yeah, that's how you do it. And then just trace that onto, onto there. Uh, I'll straighten up that hole so it's like that. I'm also going to drill an extra hole. I, uh, when I drilled the other one, I, I marked it 35 mil up so that I can move the panard rod up and down to 35 mil from wherever this ends up. Um, because I have an adjustable panard rod, I can do that. I can change the height of it um, if I do need to. Uh, but obviously, if you have a non-adjustable pan out rod, you can't do that. So I fluffed around with that for too long and it turned out all right. Bit of shit uh, in the welds and stuff. But yeah, it wasn't too bad. Um, so now I have it on the, uh, back on the trans jack on the diff. Um, I put 25 mil of spacer on both sides uh, just to sort out maximum clearance. What I'm trying to achieve here is um, Basically, I'm going to find full compression, um, so sit it as low as possible. And the reason I've put the spaces on is so I can get it perfectly centered. Um, it's kind of going to wedge itself in the guards, hopefully. Um, and then I want to get it perfectly uh, even height-wise, left and right, because um, now I'm going to start uh, with the coilover mounts. So I've got the panard rod on there, and I want to probably tack a coilover mount on each side and just get the coilover roughly sitting there. Uh, and then I'm going to put the plate on there and work out where the panard rod's going to sit from there. Obviously, in this case, we have a fuel pump and tank to clear, um, but that shouldn't be an issue, uh, I don't think. So, I've got this strap on here as a uh, backup, just in case, in case it falls off of this sketchy contraption. Is, uh, we're gonna get to that bump stop there before anything. So I don't have bump stops uh, to put in here yet, but I'm probably going to work something out once I find full compression. Just so if I don't put bump stops in there, the arms will start bottoming out on the chassis, so. All right, I don't think we're gonna get much lower than that. Yep, yep, yep. Over this way, just a smidge. That's sitting better. That's much better fitment. Perfect. Yes, please. Obviously, another issue with running it so low. Um, so, like, I've got it even side to side now, basically. Um, so, I can set the panard rod now uh, to the right length, which would be pretty short. Well, 
Yeah, so I'm gonna have to lop a fair bit off of that, but that's all right. Yeah, uh, and then obviously the coilover is gonna sit in here. Uh, like I said, this is going to be full low, but I'm probably gonna have to bump it, maybe like raise it, so drop the axle, maybe another 10 mil, because uh, we're gonna start running into a lot of um, problems here. So obviously it's very, been very low at some point and it has probably been jumped or something and the tail shafts hit the uh, floor pan. Um, but my concern is obviously running it that low is there's other things that are lower. We can notch them out, that's not an issue. I'm going to put this pan hard rod mount in somewhere like something like that. And then I can work out some coilover mounts, sway bar mounts. I'm probably gonna chop these off now um, and probably just zip tie a sway bar in there so that I know that I'm aiming for a certain amount of clearance on that. I think the idea behind these was I was gonna, um, I was gonna notch these out a little bit just to clear the sway bars wherever they ended up. But something like that. Yep. If you are doing coilovers like this, like there isn't many options to be honest. So like the idea would be to get the coilover further out, closer to the to the wheel. I could go out a little bit into this and just notch a little section out of that so it sits there. Um, but then I'm looking for clearance problems up here and we'll cross that bridge when we get there in a second. I'm liking this. All right, so I've got the new sway bar mounts tacked in. Um, this was probably my next concern of what's gonna fail and what's not on this sway bar. This is just a stock VN sway bar. And surprisingly it clears. I was worrying, it, worrying about it clearing uh, the lower arms there. Obviously it does flex, but I'm pretty confident it's not gonna hit them. Um, but this bit up here definitely hits. We're gonna need to trim these bad boys down a bit. Five mil clearance on each side probably, be fine. Now this is most definitely the first time I've tubbed a Commodore. Um, I've definitely uh, had a lot to do with other four lengths and stuff over time, just through like drifting and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, this is all pretty basic stuff. Um, and like I said, it is my first Commodore, but doesn't seem to be that hard to, yeah, work it all out. So um, now I have to fully weld uh, these brackets on. So this is obviously the standard position of the bracket and all I've done is moved it down, what, 15 mil and forwards basically. Uh, you can see like that. So position of the old one was basically back here and now I've just moved it forwards 20 mil maybe, 15, 20 mil. Um, that's just for clearance back here on the coil over. I've also marked my center lines uh, for the coil over. So that line there will line up with that line up there. Uh, so next job will be chopping uh, this bit of RHS to fit in here. Um, 
the next problem I'm going to run into, uh, with it being so low, is, uh, I didn't make these big enough, but that's easy enough to overcome. Because what I can do is make a different plate for this. Um, basically, I will extend this plate up uh, so, you know, it gives me an extra like 50 or 100 mil sort of thing. So the basically, I'm just dropping the bottom mount of the shock even lower. So that sucker will still go on there. Now that I have uh, the sway bar mounts welded, um, so I've only welded this back side. Uh, the reason why, because I'll weld the rest when it's off of the car, um, so it's easier to see and weld and everything. Uh, but yeah, the reason I've only welded the back side on these uh, is because they go over the top and they get welded like that. Uh, so how we calculate the angle that this sits on like this, um, so I've measured the pinion angle. Uh, so the pinion angle on the diff is currently at its lowest point. Uh, it's sitting at zero degrees, uh, which is pretty much never going to get run this low, but I, I'm just doing a full compression. Uh, so I know, uh, what to allow for and everything. Then at its full droop point, it measures at, so I'm just using my phone. Uh, like the level on my phone, uh, and it measures at four degrees. So it has four degrees of uh, of movement. Um, and what what I'm trying to do here, what the aim is, uh, like the flange angle on the pinion is at zero degrees, uh, and the, it has four degrees of movement. So from zero to four degrees. So what I'm aiming to do is have this face here at four degrees, uh, and the the idea behind that is. So when, when the diff uh, rotates, this will never go past like zero sort of thing um, so that we don't get any coilover bind or the coilovers don't hit on the diff or anything. Um, so it's just making sure we have clearance pretty much and setting this one at four degrees and the other one at four degrees, then we know I can set them both the same. Um, like I said, I just use my phone as a level and uh, yeah, it works pretty reliably. Uh, in saying that also though, uh, and if you're doing this at home, I just want you to keep in mind, um, whatever angle you read on the pinion, it's probably a negative value on this side. Um, that might throw a spanner in your works. Uh, if you go and do uh, like positive four on the other side or something, like if you say your pinion angle's at zero on the other side and you're trying to get four degrees, you might actually need to be getting negative four rather than four. Uh, so just keep that one in mind too. Let's get these suckers welded on. Uh, coil over lower mounts or diff mounts tacked into place. Um, I'm not sure if this is this relays, but this is what I was trying to say before. So that pinion angle there might be deceiving is zero degrees. And the coilover mounts, as you can see, they sort of point back a little bit. They are even, um, uh, and they are, depends how you measure it, four or negative four degrees. Uh, but basically, uh, as you can imagine, when the diff um, is dropped lower into the car, the pinion angle goes from zero uh, to four degrees, so it starts pointing up. Uh, so you want to imagine those um, bottom coilover mounts go from negative four or four degrees, however you want to say it. That'd be negative four if, you, if you're comparing it to that side, but it depends how you measure it on your phone or what you measure it with. And they will then angle with the diff and go like this. So they should go from four degrees and not go past zero degrees. Um, so when the coilover is bolted on, it's not going to go past uh, zero degrees and foul on anything. If my calculations are correct, but we'll find out shortly, I'm sure. 
Next part of the puzzle is uh, this here um, top coil over mount brace bar, whatever you want to call it. So I didn't film it because I put it in and out 100 times trying to get it just right. And I still can't get it up there. All right, so it sits something like that. Um, so I've marked everything in position um, and I've marked a center line for the coilover, which is up there. And what I'm going to do next is uh, notch a little hole out uh, up here. I'll show you in, in one second. Um, when, you, when you're doing plates like this, you can, or you probably should, I should say, weld a... Uh, You should, come on phone. This is where the top coilover mount brace uh, will be welded up to this point here. Uh, so the steel is pretty thick here, which is why I'm not doing it. But it's good practice to like weld a plate in here to take up this area. Um, and that way it spreads the load sort of thing. But I, the only reason I'm not doing it is because I'm welding it to the floor uh, all the way across. So it'll actually join the two chassis rails together. Uh, so I'm not too concerned about it in this instance. So this is what I mean by uh, what I'm doing with these top mounts is I'm actually recessing them inside of this uh, RHS here. Um, so I'm using 40 mil RHS with a two mil wall. Uh, so these will actually fit inside. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just uh, cut a nice section out of here so that that fits in there. Uh, nicely uh, and then I'm going to so the the hole obviously that the mount will sit in will be there I'll show you in one sec once I cut it out um, so you can imagine this will sit something like that but I don't just want to chuck a bolt through that because it's only pretty thin so what I'm going to do is weld a plate on the outside and then I'll drill a hole all the way through uh, and that's what that mount will will sit on now there is another issue that we may face but uh, I'll deal with that in a minute. I'll show you guys. You're going to have to excuse my messy bench, guys. That's what it looks like when there's work getting done.
here is what the finished top coilover mount, so the body side uh, looks like. Pretty much what the idea here was. Um, so notched out a piece for the uh, like top of the coilover to sit in, like that. Um, and because I've notched it out, and because it's only a two mil wall uh, RHS, I've put these plates on there. Uh, you can probably use whatever you wanted to do if you were doing this. Anything that's probably you know three mil up would be fine. I use that because once again that was a bit of the uh, leftover RHS that I used and made those uh, out of. So yeah, just lop them off and uh, glued it all together. So time consuming, but just remember this is the uh, the mount that's hard to get in and out. And once it's in, it's not coming back out. So yeah, do it once, do it right. And that will go somewhere like that. So I'm going to get this all tacked in, um, stitch everything in place probably. So not quite a tack, not quite a weld, just stitch it all in. Uh, Cause I have rethought what I'm doing here and I'm going to uh, do one final weld out right at the very end. So I'm gonna fully like stitch all these in, but not fully weld them in, if that makes sense. Uh, reason behind that being is after this stage, which will be putting the actual tubs in, uh, putting the actual wheel wells in, um, I'm going to have to pull it all out again and I don't really wanna have to do it twice for no reason. So um, yeah, that's the uh, method behind my madness of only welding it out at the end. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to get these top mounts welded in. Uh, I've also, you've seen in that time lapse there, shortened one panard rod. Uh, let's go. Something like that. Um, I just have to weld that sucker in there too. Uh, it's going to be on a slight angle because it has to be, just to line up with a pan I'd write, it has to be on just the right angle. Uh, so if you are doing this best bet, do the pan I'd rod first and then do this very last, just so you can get it in the right spot. Basically I will uh, bolt it all up after I've done the coilovers and then I can just tack her in place like that. And bada bing, bada boom. Um, so I've just been sweating it all day because it's blooming hot. Um, these are just temporary. I just kind of bolted a couple bits of steel together just to see what I need to do with it. I'll make a fancy little bracket up for that um, so it extends up and has a bottom on it and stuff. So a bit of bracing whatnot. So I've done that on both sides just to see what it needs. Um, pretty much from here, I'm just going to chuck a couple... Uh, more little welds on here and there and then yeah I think I'm ready to drop it on the ground so what do I reckon how's it look very professional backyard good definitely more stoked on the uh, that fitment that it has so I just got to get some front springs for it um, and swap them out and then pretty much drop it on the ground and see what it looks like. So the, yeah, I'm not really a hundred percent sure on what front springs I'm going to run yet. I'm just putting King springs in it pretty much because they're easy and obviously they're not adjustable, but the rear is adjustable. Um, so from here, like this is obviously not, uh, it's not at full droop. It's also not at compression because I have that ratchet strap on it still. So I'm going to rip that off in a sec and see what she does. 
I think it turned out pretty good. I'm actually pretty happy with it. So, like I said, I've got to um, pull it out and re-weld, well, re-weld, pull it out and weld everything because most things just tacked. Um, but yeah, that will be next VN video um, because yeah, I'll need to pull it out when I do the tubs anyway. So I'm just going to do it once and that way I don't need to fluff around and do it many a times for no reason. If anyone was wondering, yes, it does fit with a fuel tank. I had tested it, I just hadn't filmed it before. So um, I need to make up a little bracket or something for the new fuel pump, which will go up in this area somewhere. So you, this is that full compression, remember, and this is the outlet for the fuel pump, uh, or fuel tank, inlet for the fuel pump. It's tight, but fits. So what more do you want, really? I'm not going to disclose what fuel pump I'm putting in it yet. It might give away what engine I'm putting in the car. I don't want to do that yet. No one's guessed it. Well, no one's guessed what engine uh, is going in yet. I've been reading through the comments and there's a few good answers, but uh, no correct answers yet. So keep guessing. What do you reckon's going in it? Also, I might add one more point I don't think I really mentioned it. Um, if you are doing this at home and you're uh, like obviously doing this top mount the same as I've done, um, one thing you want to be careful of or cautious of, I should say, is making sure that once you've got the top coil over um, mount in, uh, it's kind of sitting in the middle of its, like this is where the middle of its um, travel is sort of thing. So that top mount is 90 degrees out to this bottom mount. Um, so if you have it too far left or right or whatever, it'll bind up and you want it right in the middle of its travel. So um, yeah, just something to be wary of. Make sure you're not levering on it to try and get the bolt in sort of thing. You need the uh, bolt to be able to go in easy as. Um, there's no, there is a better way probably to do it you'd have to spend a lot longer on it. This is kind of the same way that most kits out there um, mount the top. Obviously this is a very uh, budget basic option. Most of those guys have like special laser cut brackets and everything, not a clunky old bit of RHS, but 10 bucks worth of RHS or five bucks worth of RHS outweighs a bracket that's two, three, four hundred dollars or whatever. So, um, but yeah. Just be cautious of that if you're doing it yourself. Make sure there's no bind in anything. Make sure everything's in, in a nice, like, loose-ish position. So, yep. Overall, draft with it. When those brand new king springs aren't quite low enough you just gotta nip a coil out of them i'm not sure it needed tie shine uh but you know just polishing a turd king springs in 
Um, hopefully they go low enough. About to find out. It's the first time it's going to, on the ground with the front low. Hopefully it looks good. Got a good feeling there. Ticking the boxes. Pretty chuffed on that one, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I'm so dirty. It's ridiculous. So dirty. I swear I go through like a hat a week. So what do we reckon? How'd it turn out? Obviously, definitely still a work in progress. There's a lot of work to do on it, a lot. But, we're nearing the end. I mean, I think I might raise it. <clears throat> Maybe 10 mil in the back. Don't wanna raise it too much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's so funny definitely excited for it so yeah next vn video uh the plan is to like i said get the tubs in in the back um and then after that i might get this en engine running before i pull it out but then yeah spicy new engine incoming budget build spicy engine so Obviously, it'll be all do it myself, and uh, let's see what we can blow up. Got to blow a few engines up to keep things interesting, though, right? Uh, but that is going to be it for this week's video. Thanks so much for all the comments on the last video. Um, I read through everything, and uh, yeah, so it, general consensus is everybody likes the fab uh, videos. So, uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to stay up to date to find out what silly engine I'm going to put in this. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, see you next week. Those new King Springs definitely uh, weren't quite low enough. Snip, snip.